Good afternoon. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's 2.32 Victorian time in Australia, wherever you are in this part of the world. Don't forget the good thing about this is um, whatever I talk about is actually universal because the thing called Road to the Sale. Road to the Sale is anywhere in the world. They may have different variations on um, in America. They rely a lot on repayments, finance. Here in Australia, it's finance and cash. And other countries, well... It's uh, very, very similar to how we do it here. It's not rocket science. Um, today, very quickly, um, you've, uh, we've got to the test drive. You've done the test drive, you come back. <clears throat> and let's just say you really, really like the car. Okay? The salesman will come out to you very, very quickly. And um, he'll be listening rather, uh, rather accurately at uh, what your feelings are. If... Remember I said go for a test drive by yourself. When he gets back, he's going to ask you probably the following questions. And it's questions that rely on you either saying yes or no, and then they have open-ended questions. So the, the, the open-ended uh, the, uh, the yes or no will be how did you enjoy the drive? Sorry, the open-ended questions will be how did you enjoy the drive? You'll say it was great. Um... Do you, uh, so does that mean you want to buy the car? Yes or no? Um, <clears throat> it's that simple. It's called a trial close. Trial close means that, um, you know, you and your wife spoke. You might have been out for an hour in the car. And now it's up to the salesman to uh, try and um, get you to uh, buy the motor car. Now, you need, you haven't spoken about figures yet. You've got a trade-in maybe involved. You've got finance maybe involved. You've got payouts maybe involved on your trade-in. We need the salesman to slow down a little bit. And if he does his job right, he, he may sell you this car. Um, but if he starts putting pressure on you, saying that the car, we've got, we've got three other people on the same car and all that sort of rubbish that they say, well, so be it. If you, how many cars, have you ever been to pass Fowl's auctions in Victoria to see how many cars are out waiting for auction right now? At Holden's, Ford's, Toyota's. Lines they use is um, it's a today only sale. Well, um, you just have to jump on the internet, uh, onto the radio to hear that toll guy who has a one day sale every day, 365 days of the year. Um, dealerships have sales. You, you open up the paper. Um, Hyundai having one now. It's uh, never to, never to be repeated price. Um, but I guarantee you next week. I will guarantee you that I will get the price that um, that they will be promoting this week. Because at the end of the day, it's a number for them, and they need to sell motor cars as well, as you need to buy a motor car. So you've got to test drive. The car is parked outside. You bring the keys in. You give it to the salesman, and you sit down. Now, if he's a professional salesman, he should be offering you a cup of tea, a coffee, or or, or, or a cold drink. Most salesmen, this is where their laziness comes in. They don't do it. It's straight to business. And you're talking figures in the air because they're not, they don't even have a piece of paper in front of them. In fact, if I went to a salesman and he didn't have a pen in his pocket and he didn't have a notebook in his pocket and his phone dare went off while he was talking to me, that would be the end of the sale. That is just absolutely, absolutely a no-no. And I've seen salesmen answer the phone while they're talking to the customer. And they're asking the customer for a pen because they can't find one. They wear shirts which have pockets in them. They can't prepare to put the price list, the pen, the paper. They're um, they're half cocked. They're not ready to rock and roll. So um, you're sitting down now at a table. Hopefully, got a cup of coffee in front of you, um, which you shouldn't have to ask for. It should be offered. But if you want to ask, it's up to you. Now, what they will do is they'll start writing figures down. And look, you don't need to worry about the figures yet. Don't You don't need to sit there and, and watch every word they put down. Because what they're going to do is they're going to go... The was price. So there's the... Whatever, whatever the price is... Um, let's say the price was... Um, off car sales is 17... It's 17,990. Right? And let's say that... In there, there they've got to have a special form in the window. Let's say it says twenty three nine ninety, right? The first thing they're going to do is 
and you've already saved six thousand dollars so please don't crunch me on the car now remember you didn't come on you didn't you didn't come in on the 23990 car you came on the 17990 so whatever price I had on it before means absolutely nothing to you you've just traveled from Coburg you know it's a cheap car so if you do negotiate it'll be very small amounts don't expect thousands or ten percent or fifteen percent if you already know it's a cheap car if they don't give you the right price you trade it don't trade your car in okay so you've sat down they've explained to you to make sure that um, because it, uh, in Victoria it must be drive away price um, one of the dealerships and I won't mention them but uh, let's just say they're a big used car enterprise are actually breaking the law by not putting plates on their car so they're not actually drive away price and people get on the internet and think that the, the car is cheaper when really it's not um, basically you're paying for the 12 months registration the stamp duty and the transfer fee and in the, in Victoria that's a big no-no but the way they've got around it is they take the plates off the car and um, literally get the car roadworthy when it's time that's not how you do business to me why do they get away with it and the other 400 dealerships won't get away with it so how they've got around it I've got no idea and you know what I don't really care because they, they always spruik they do so many cars and wah 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 well to me they're just dodgy brothers they're nowhere um, they're not prepared they want to sit you down and then what they want to do is pressure the crap out of you by having special clothes a special manager as soon as you walk into the room of no return you wait till you see all these people pounce on you and then finance this particular firm has 32 finance people um, you watch them pounce on you whole idea of buying a car it actually is a pleasant experience it's not hard it sounds by the way I'm, I'm putting it across I'm trying to give you the worst case scenarios so you don't get caught up in this field and um, if they use lines like it's a today only sale well okay fair enough it's a today only sale what much how much difference from price is it really really going to be tomorrow um, so what you're telling me John is you won't do this price Monday if I say no to you and I do do it Monday I've just lied to you so what you're telling me is my car's worth eight thousand dollars today but it's not worth eight thousand dollars Monday because it's you know fib 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 no fibs true so you're sitting at the table you got your cup of coffee uh, then they're getting the, the piece of paper sitting in front, negotiation paper. And what, what the salesman does, he writes the price minus your trade-in, and then he turns the paper around. He's sitting on the other side of the table, turns the paper around, and he has been taught, and I mean taught, put the paper in front of you with the changeover figure, hopefully in a different colour so you can actually see how much you're paying out. And he's been taught that no matter what happens, shut the hell up and don't say a word. There's a saying in the car trade, the first person that opens their mouth loses. And that's a true fact. And it's normally the customer. Because the customer will do, well, uh, I do need a tow bar for it. And the salesman then repeat what you say. So, so if I can get a tow bar for your car, you'll buy the car today? Oh, yeah, if you can do that. What I'll do, I'll just go and ask my manager. Now, he'll go and talk, he'll walk out of the room. And leave you alone. They don't. They don't. Have, they don't have microphones. They're not listening to what you're saying. But why not bring the manager to you? Stay on the table. Don't let the salesman leave. And bring the manager to you, because he's just sitting in an office. He's, he's, he's iron cage, waiting for the salesman to come to him, so that um, they can play this stupid game that have been playing for 25 years. Make the sales manager come to you and sit on the table with you, so you can see in his eyes. That if he says no to a tow bar, he can tell you why. And make him show you. How much is a tow bar? Five ninety five. Okay, right, fair enough. Um, we might go halves in it. Um, and so forth. So you're sitting on the table, you're trying to do a deal, bring this manager to you. You don't go to the manager. So it's as simple as that. Um, you you get two choices. When uh, the deal happens, it's either a yes or a no. All right, they say uh, the, the the sales. Oh my goodness, it's it's uh, very very bright today. Um, they'll say whether uh, you know there's a great deal. Do you want the deal? 
and you're sitting in front of a piece of paper. Now listen, you don't have to say yes there and then, right? Can you give us a couple of minutes alone? Can you give us a couple of minutes alone? Yes, of course the salesman will say that. They'll walk outside. You talk to your wife, your kids, whatever. Walk around the car again. Find out. Remember, once you sign something, don't come back three days later and say oh, there was a chip on the car or the tyres weren't right or whatever. Because once you own it, you own it. So get all the get all the negatives or whatever up front now so there's not that down the track. And um, there's nothing, you know, make sure if there's a stain in the seat, make sure they say on, on your contract that with conditions, stain is to be removed or stone chips removed out of front or extended warranty free of charge. Make sure everything is written. Black and white is the only way that you'll get a good deal and the only way that they don't they won't over promise and under deliver then. The salesmen are renowned for saying, Yeah, if you buy it I'll, I'll give you a tank of petrol, then you turn up and of course there's a quarter of a tank inside your car and um, you haven't signed for it, it's your word against his word and nine times out of ten you just want to get out of the goddamn place and uh, get into your beautiful new car. Well, no, that's not how the trade works. The trade works on they need you to be writing good things about them and to be telling other people what a great experience they had at the particular dealership. Because the manufacturer come down hard, very, very hard on dealers that are not complying with what um, is meant to happen. Now you'll notice I don't, I don't rehearse nothing. I don't use bits of paper. Everything's coming out of here. So my, all my stuff comes from the heart. Um, and that's why I was very successful when I was selling motor cars because um, I actually felt the customer enjoying the car when they were driving it and that to me was a great thing. So um, we'll leave it at that. We've got to the negotiation spot where you're about to say yes and I'll give you some tips on um, um, the paperwork and then um, when it comes to delivery time and then what I'm going to do is uh, in another episode, I'm going to do in 10 minutes selling you a car dodgy from A to Z in 10 minutes, and then I'll then I'll do a proper way of selling you a car from A to Z, and uh, you'll see a difference. And again, a di again, um, it's all simple stuff, but um, all it's all from in here, and it's all stuff that that I've seen happen over 20 years, and um, a lot of dealers are now watching these little videos and uh, they're probably not getting tips of it, but they're getting shocks because it's very egotistical. And um, yeah, so I'll talk to you very shortly and um, thank you for listening.